Welcome to another video. This one's gonna be a continuation of repairs and upgrades on the 1988 Chevy C30 square body wrecker. Uh, you guys seem to enjoy this truck, so I figured I'd keep shooting video on it as we do some more much needed repairs and stuff. Uh, right now I'm getting ready to go drop this off. I think guys has got a U-Haul trailer, so should be able to get it on there easy. But I have a bunch of ideas of things we wanna fix, so let's get on with the video. And that'll be the final end of the Javelin, off to Ben in New York. I gotta say, these U-Haul trailers are awesome. It's got the fold-down fenders on it, aluminum, chains to support them, and there's a step under there too, the push-in ramps. What a, a fabulous piece. The first thing to start with is gonna be the running issue. So the way I start this is just pop the fuse in and that turns the pump on probably fix that in this video too but uh, i'll let it run for you know 10 seconds 20 seconds and here's the problem we're having now it starts up and shuts off and i hear that pump going going but i think we're not building up enough fuel pressure if i do that like 10 times it'll stay running uh, my guess is there's some kind of regulator inside of that throttle body in fact it definitely is and i think it's dirty or hung up or something or another Yep, almost. This one it'll probably stay running. Nope. And there it is. So once it's running, it's fine. It's just starting off the rib. I don't know. We'll have to go check that fuel pressure. I think we'll start there. I'm gonna have to get a shorter belt for that because you can see she's fully maxed out on the adjustment. And belt's got a little dry rod anyway, but I'll have to get a shorter one because as I showed you, that was fully maxed out on the adjustment. Ended up taking the three screws off to remove this entire TBI assembly. This is the regulator right there and the inlet on this side. Figured I wanted to clean this up anyway, uh, but with it off, plenty of room to get in there with a fuel pressure gauge. And well, here's what I found. I don't know how well you can see it, but I'm not getting much flow out of this. Although it does build up pressure, it takes a while though, even with the lines purged, I mean, up to 20. So that's pretty good because I think the TBI only gets like 10 to 15, but that just seems like really, really low flow. So I guess I'm feeling like we have a restriction or more than likely a bad aftermarket pump because uh, I did get the cheapest one available when I put it in. I mean, it sounds healthy though. Let's see what kind of flow we've got pre-filter. We got like nothing. Look at that trickle coming out of there. That is not normal. We gotta drop the tank. Luckily, I left plenty of tail on the hoses and wires. Then I found the issue. You see, how I left lots of tail on these hoses, and I kind of wound them so that they wouldn't kink up or anything. Well, that one did kink. Look at that. So, uh, simple fix. Dummy me. I'm surprised it didn't give me a problem up until this point. 
Oh yeah, let me get that fixed. And with that all back together, we still got the 20 PSI, but look at the flow difference. Oh yeah, just a kinked hose. How about that? And with the kinked hose rectified, I still did want to go ahead and take this apart, put it in the ultrasonic cleaner, and then I'm gonna try to go get a gasket kit for it. Looks like they got it in stock at Advance Auto. Fixing what's not broken. But yeah, from my experience, these are notorious to fail over time. The uh, fuel pressure diaphragm gets a little hole in there and starts sucking unmetered fuel in. It's got adjustment too, but you can see that's been like brazed into place there. I'm going to start by dropping these in the Berryman Chem Dip, and then I've got the new ultrasonic cleaner with the mixture of simple green in there so I'll let that heat up you know i bet you this stuff would work a lot better hot too maybe i'll drop it into here yeah and then let that heat up and turn the ultrasonic cleaner on too you can even flip the lid around and oh it's perfect fit let that go for like 20 minutes we are three 30 minute cycles later let's see how things are looking Cleaned them up really nice. I ended up taking the injectors out too. These are directional. They have a little pin right there that gets lined up in that groove. And there's a bunch of like brass junk in here. I don't I don't know where it came from um, or how well you can see it, but yeah. Now I'll go blow this all out and got the new seal kit. Got her all back together, uh, fully cleaned up with new gaskets and regulator diaphragm. Did grab the shorter belt too, so I'll take care of the alternator squeal. And in case any of you guys got TBI trucks and you want to get one of these rebuild kits, this is AC Delco 219-607. Made in USA, in stock, 41 bucks at Advance Auto. I also cleaned up the whole throttle body area. No sense in taking it off. It's going to be like new. New O-rings on the lines too. All back together, got the fuel pump running, no visible leaks, new belt on, should fire right up this time. Yeah! Sounds way better. Next on the list is going to be the oil filter adapter. So based on the recommendation of you guys, I looked up this part to replace the oil cooler adapter that I had plugged off before. So this is a little bit better. And before that though, there's a seat cover, dash cover, new PTO throttle cable, and not for hire. Let's throw the magnets and not for hire on. Got new slings here too. Alrighty. Ah, oh, thought that'd be big enough. Almost. And now if somebody points their phone at it, it's all the way from here. Boom, link tree, no nonsense, no how. Bring it to the YouTubes and Instagram and all that kind of stuff. The neat thing about this link tree is if you ever change, let's say, your NNKH merch site, right? You can uh, just plug that into the link tree and it doesn't matter. Whereas if you have a QR code that goes to a dedicated website, then if that website ever changes for some reason, the, the QR code's useless. And boom. See, that one covers it fully. This, I probably measured this side when I, when I did it. Not really adhering up here very well, though. I bet you there's some Bondo under, under on this part. Oh yeah, yeah. Look at that. Look at how deep that is. Of course, you can see it up near the mirror too. So this would definitely uh, hit over here at some point. I just put a little silicone under there and it'll cure just fine.
Now in the last video, I made the decision to get rid of the oil cooler because somebody had it just uh, looped up front and the hose was in bad shape. Plugged these off and I didn't realize they sold a whole different housing to you know, get rid of that. So I got Melling part number MFA 350, made in USA. Here's a look at the housing. And of course we're gonna need some shorter bolts. So they should stick out about yay far. Go in the bolts drawer. 516 by 16. I should have some uh, good quality bolts in here. We have got a couple grade eight bolts. Not that they need to be grade eight, but that'll work. With the oil filter rectified, I think next we'll go with dash carpet cover and uh, seat cover. Build up the morale a little bit on this thing. For the hole, uh, I don't think I'll do anything at the moment. I actually kind of like the way my, my butt sits into it. Uh, I think we'll just throw the cover on for now. And if you guys have a good idea, you know, minus just shoving a towel in there, I could always just shove anything in there. But uh, maybe a better idea of something. Otherwise, I'll go with the uh, bath towel. You see the dash really ain't in bad shape. But I'll just bust off some of these cracks that are sticking up. And I think the, the carpet will uh, finish that off nice. Let's see. Came out pretty nice. This just has a bunch of loops on the bottom and you gotta tie like a gazillion ropes, but you know, all said and done, it uh, came out pretty good. Looks nice on there and carpet up on the dash. Oh, now moving on to, I guess uh, the sling, the next thing. Oh, and for anybody looking for one of these for a square body, it's made by Seat Covers Unlimited Saddle Blanket, made in Mexico. Get these on Amazon. I also really like that it's got a pocket across the entire front of it too, so you can just tuck a bunch of stuff in there if you want to. Good. He's all painted up. Ready to slap together. Oh, I do need some bolts too. those brand new slings brand new bolts because the old ones were all rusty and uh yeah there were some people commenting saying the weight shouldn't be on the sling and everything i read online says yes when you when you pick a car up the weight should be on the sling and and the bumper and then the chains are just a backup of course you can short chain it and that saves your sling a little bit but these are designed to carry the weight of uh, the front of the car you know and now we throw the pto throttle cable on not much to show you with that uh, in the last video, I showed you guys how these things work. I got the cable installed, and so here's kind of a look at the differences. Uh, if we have it just at idle and it lifts all the way in right now, if you go to pull that in, it'll just stall the engine out. But now we can pull this out a little bit and then twist it, bring the RPM up some. And so if you mistakenly go to bring the wheel lift in, it's just gonna pull full load on that hydraulic pump not stalled out. It's probably a little bit higher RPM than we need. Bring that in a little bit. I'd say right about there is good. And now look, we got much faster, stronger hydraulics. The winch is faster. Everything's better. So don't know how I got along without this. And when you want to stop, just done.
Nice upgrade there. So ever since been in a throttle body and injectors, the idle has come up a lot more. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. I'll try to turn that down a little bit. And definitely like when driving, noticeable increase in power actually it could have just been the, the fuel pressure issue too but ooh, that's a little bit better and here's a look at the pto throttle cable it's got two stoppers on there and this little chain you guys taking a nap at the back door together so cute and the party's join gus you gotta go out anyway come on you haven't been out pee yet Go ahead. Out here next day, finally got the fuel pump issue squared away. So when you turn this key on, you get the ECM primes the fuel pump for 15 seconds. Uh, and when the, once the engine starts, you get oil pressure down here to the switch, which if you guys remember the last video, I determined that switch was bad. And it was, however, I didn't realize the terminal pins in here, the corrosion, they weren't making good connections. Because when it starts, it gets oil pressure. The ECM is waiting to see a 12 volt back at the ECM, and then it will send 12 volts over to the fuel pump relay. This is a five wire on here. Uh, the red is just a, a test. To, if you want to hear the pump run, you send 12 volts down that. The green, white is the 12 volts should be coming from the ECM. The uh, Orange is power constant, the black and white is the ground, and the tan white is the actual voltage going to the fuel pump module. So anyway, long story short, it was the bad switch first, then a bad contact at the terminal pin, and now a bad relay. And once I get that relay, it should be good. I just called the store and they don't have the relay in stock, but should be able to get it later today. Uh, one of the next items to address is gonna be the pin on the wheel lift. It's very, very loose. So as you guys saw in previous videos, uh, this hangs down a lot more than I'd like. Uh, you got a few things going on. These big plastic washers uh, take up most of the side-to-side -side play and those are pretty worn out. But there's a big bronze bushing in here too and you see it, I mean look how much play that has without me even taking this apart. Well it looks like it's supposed to have a plate with a couple bolts under here but uh, that's gone. Oh, it should just pop right up, really. Here are my thoughts on this. I was just looking up pictures. 100% needs a bushing and pin kit. They're like $300. Uh, so I should probably order that first before taking the part because this is gonna need heat and that nylon washer is gonna get toasted. Uh, so yeah, I guess we'll, we'll have to do that on the next one. I mean, it's still usable the way it is now. It just just sits down a little bit further than I'd like. Well, I'd rather have it usable than not at all. So we'll just have to order that first. All right, I want to take a quick minute here and thank the longtime sponsor of this channel, Blaster. Talk about their silicone spray lubricant. The big benefit you're gonna get with this over any other spray lube is it's non-reactive. So it's not gonna swell rubber seals or say weather stripping or plastic hinges you could use it on. That you wanna hit your snow shovel with it before a snowstorm. It's not gonna cause that plastic to deform over time like hitting it with uh, you know, oil could do. A quick example over on the tow truck. Let's say the weather stripping is kind of dried out. Uh, I like to just spray a little bit on a rag and soak in there. And then you can rub it up and down the weather stripping and get that uh, silicone to soak into the rubber a little bit and puts a nice coating on there and it's going to seal a lot better protect it or over on your windows you get a nice fancy handle uh, you can use it for lubing these channels up see so i'll go all the way down and then just go overkill with it give it a nice shot in each channel you might have to wipe it off the windows too wow these are actually kind of cracked apart but the nice thing is the silicone lube is not going to cause them to get more cracked uh, than they already are. Oh yeah, look at that. I can I can already feel the difference going up nice and smooth. So if you don't already have a can of silicone lube in your arsenal, then next time you're at the auto parts store or Walmart, pick a can up. And uh, let's jump back to the video now. Thanks very much, Blaster, for the support. Here we go. Just got the call. Fuel pump relay is in. Let's go for a test spin. Pick that up. And oh, I guess we should grab the Gus man to take him out. Hey Gus man, you want to go for a car ride? 
Now you sit there. One of these days I'm gonna come in and step right on you, buddy. What do you think of new seat cover, buddy? Oh, good sniffs all the way from Mexico, huh? I wonder if it's after I welded the frame, probably uh, tweak the racks a little bit. What do you think, Gus? Sleepyhead? Oh, yeah. Stepping at the old Wawa to fill up. Nothing like a Wawa hoagie. Gus says, yeah, nothing like a hoagie. Get your face out of there. Hey, get back. No, no. You don't listen, do you? All right, you got one cucumber. All right, he sat here the rest of the time as a good boy. You get one, one more cucumber. You don't want to be eating all that bread and meat. It's not good for you, buddy. Got the new relay. Just drop it in right next door to this one. Plug her on in. Well, let's see what happens. We start it. Tighten that bell again. Uh, before it would just shut off after 15 seconds, so time will tell. And that did it. So it was a bad oil pressure switch, corrosion on the terminal pin, and a bad fuel pump relay. Good for now, and I uh, have that little jumper. I'll keep in the glove box in case that ever goes bad and we have to jump it again. This thing is squeaky over bumps. Oh yeah. Jens, uh, this is where the Torino lives now under cover and a lot of people are always asking about the ambulance Well, it's parked over here and no big priority plans for it yet I, I think I've already mentioned this in a couple videos, but it's kind of just uh, sitting here until well, I don't know. It's a long story There she is Hi. Little sneak peek into Jens next video. What do you got going on over here? You like my new window? Oh, look at that. She's putting a hood vent in. Wow, it's nice. Coming out good. How, how are things working? Not simple. <laughs> things are not going super smooth. Well, when she puts this video up, I will drop a link to that down below. What? The whole cab shook when you closed the door? <laughs> you want to drive? No. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. I could drive. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the guy's flying down your street. Go into the hardware store. No more popping the fuse in and out. I got the uh, uh, fuel pump relay and wiring fixed. Which hardware store are we going to? Uh, the one right at the end of the street. Oh, all right. This place? It's right here. Old school hardware store. That's right, true value. She's looking for a ductwork crimper. And because my hole is just a little too small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. This place is cool though. It reminds me of the old hardware store in, in the town I grew up in. 
paint mixer right here. Very cute. Bye guys. <laughs> Stop in the brewery for a quick beer and get this guy zipping her out on some kind of contraption. What is that thing? Home built? It's called a crazy car. You wanna try it? Um, no. It's made for adults. I'm six foot. Try it. Sure, okay. <laughs> Be careful, it has no brakes. No That's brakes. He's used, he's used to no brakes. Gotta turn the wheel all the way. Regular, and then I pull this up. Oh. <laughs> oh, <turn>. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gus, it's okay, Gus. It's okay. He's fine. <laughs> I uh, appreciate it, man. Uh, <laughs> what were you doing? <laughs> you too, man. It's like a little drift cart. <laughs> Gus did not like that thing. <laughs> Cheers, baby. I'm out here next day doing some last minute tinkering and such. Got the uh, new LEDs for the auxiliary lights because these are all crusty and rusty inside. Had the, the seal beam Unity made in Chicago. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm gonna replace this wheel bearing if you guys remember. I think it was a part one or so when we were doing the front brakes. This one was a little noisy but I cheaped out at the time. So. Now that I'm driving this on the highway and cruising around, I'm going to just take care of a few last minute items. But, it, you know, I might not look it with all the rust, but this is at the point where I'm happy with it. I mean, we've taken it from a, a decrepit old tow truck sitting in the yard, very, very neglected, uh, to a fully functional unit. And uh, you guys, uh, a lot of people are always asking about price. What'd you pay? How much are you into these, these vehicles for? So I figured I'd go over a little bit of that real quick. Uh, paid $800 for it. And at the time, I mean, that's that's a pretty good deal, you know, but but with what it needed, you're almost better off just spending, you know, four or five grand. You can get one of these running, driving, operating. And uh, and so I didn't I wasn't really too interested in this one. I was originally supposed to sell it. Uh, I didn't like that it was two wheel drive. That was the, the big deal. I kind of if I'm going to have something like this, I'd rather get a four wheel drive. But then, um, you know, I got suckered into owning it. And so I'm everything said and done i'm into it for thirty three hundred dollars and a whole bunch of labor and time uh but you know so if you enjoy working on old vehicles and such then it's totally worth it but if you just want to get one that that you know, to get some work done no you're better off getting a newer unit and i know a ton of people are going to say man this thing is hideous why don't you put diamond plate on here i don't mind the look of it at all it, it tells a story it's a north jersey truck and realistically if i was ever going to do do up uh, the the bed. I'd, I'd get a cab for it first. I think. I think we'd we'd go out west and, and try to pick up a rust-free cab and then do it all up. But realistically, it not being four-wheel drive, I think I've gotten it to a point where it's it's just just where I need it to be. It works. It's insured, registered, and it's a very useful piece to have. Just to recap on some of the main items fixed and replaced. Of course, the the cracked frame, six new tires, new front calipers, pads and brake lines that were all rusted out, three new brake hoses, fuel tank, fuel pump module, uh, oil pressure switch, the, the relay, all LED lighting, new headlights, got the new aux lights at the back too, we got the spinners working up there, the new slings, all new shoes, hardware, and wheel cylinders in the back, PTO throttle cable, lubricated every grease fitting, especially the ones that were seized up on the wheel lift and such, you, know, you got the interior dressed up nice. There's also the parking brake cables, master cylinder, and cleaned out that throttle body injection, and probably a bunch of other stuff. So listen, I've had fun working on this. I definitely appreciate you guys checking out the videos if you did, 
and I don't think there'll be more on this. If anything, maybe just a second video on the, the part, uh, the second double NKH2 channel replacing that pin. But really, it, after looking at it more and moving a couple cars, it really is fine the way it is. The last thing I'll touch on is uh, the lack of videos. There's so many comments and I got emails and, and all that saying, where where are you? What, what happened? Because I didn't post a video for about two weeks. Uh, I was on a trip with Camerata out in Montana doing a snowmobile trip. So that was an absolute blast. And hey, everybody's got to take take a little time off. I might start getting into the, the one, one video every two week schedule because trying to bust out one every week and then also working a lot of side job stuff too uh it, it turns to be a lot so either which way i definitely appreciate you guys tuning into these very much and you know yeah that's uh that's it thanks so much for watching see you again soon no nonsense though how over out